Ah, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jack Farmer, and this is the Evolution of Movies show, but I am not alone. I am joined by two men with a very particular set of skills. It's Andy Rossi and James Shippy. Fellas, how you doing? Feeling great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to be here. Very happy to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are back. <laughs> Couldn't have do it without you. Or I could, but it'd be very boring me just talking about them. <laughs> it'd be different. I'd myself. pay to see that. You two be... talking to like two versions of you. Wouldn't <laughs> have stuff. the dynamicism that we have right now. Dynamicism? <laughs> yeah. oh, Is that a real word? I don't, I don't know. know. I like it. I've, I've learned over the years, if you just say something confidently, most people don't question you. I believed you. If you're new to the show... <laughs> The way the show works is we call it the evolution of movies because we watch movies and every time we watch a movie, we watch a movie that came out one year after the last movie that we watched. So we start in 1990, 90, we go to 1991, then 92. Now we're all the way up to 2008. That means next week we're doing 2009. But for now, let's just talk about the here and now. Let's talk about 2008, a time when movies were all about old dudes showing that they can still rough people up with movies like Gran Torino, The Wrestler, and of course, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Ooh, but we aren't ooh. watching any of those. We're talking about Taken, the movie Roger Ebert gave 2.5 stars to, and IMDb describes as a retired CIA agent travels across Europe and relies on his old skills to save his estranged daughter, who has been kidnapped while on a trip to Paris. I didn't know until I looked this up that he was part of the CIA. I just thought he was just some <laughs> government spook. But there we go. Uh, I um, I loved this movie when it came out, and uh, it definitely made the career of Liam Neeson. Uh, well, he already had a career, but this like shifted it and did something new. Yeah. So I was really excited to see it again. James, had you seen Taken before this viewing, and what did you think going into it this time? <laughs> How many times have I seen Taken? I, I think, <laughs> like I said, I mean, I think we were all pleasantly surprised when this movie came out, you know, if you saw it initially. Mm -hmm. This time when I watched it, I was surprised. I thought it was more action packed from the very beginning, but there's like a build to it and we'll talk about it. But it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's got a nice little story and it's really about this father trying to connect with his daughter and you know when she gets kidnapped that's his chance to do it <laughs> you know, ironically you know he's, so <laughs> he's like sweet this is yeah. my chance to connect with my daughter exactly exactly because <laughs> before that he was just oh that's dad you know he, he comes in handy once she's kidnapped overseas yeah right um look it's a great movie I mean, it, it's really great. Liam Neeson, and as you said, he was already a well-known, uh, you know, dramatic actor. He's been in the game for years before this, but this was a a career shift that turned him into an action star. So the Liam Neeson we all know now is 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 a, a man that you know, yeah. he said a particular set of skills. You know, he, you know, he kicks ass now, yeah. and yeah. and he's like kind of yeah, there's something about him, but it's it's always grounded. So you know you're gonna get great acting and a commitment, and he's just a guy that's scary. You don't want to screw with this guy. And this is a, a wonderful movie to watch, and it moves fast. I uh, I remember seeing this originally and thinking that Liam Neeson he seems so old he can't be that big of a badass. And then he, I'm like, wow, he is that big yeah. of a badass. <laughs> now I look back on it and I don't want to give ages away, but I'm like, he's probably not that much older than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I'm, like, I'm watching, I'm like. He wasn't that old. Come on. <laughs> he looks good. <laughs> he looks good. Uh, Andy, uh, you picked the movie. Uh, explain why you picked it and uh, why this one stood out for you. You know, I think it's just been parodied so many times with a particular set of skills. And I, I, unlike James, I think I maybe only have seen this movie like one time. After this, though, there was like, um, I think there's a couple sequels. And then there's just other versions of Liam Neeson kicking ass in other movies. So this definitely set off like this whole new area for Liam Neeson. So I just wanted to get to the original one and see exactly what it was. And uh, I was very pleasantly surprised yeah it was it was it was better than i i remembered like james said i thought it was going to be super like 
action packed the whole time, which it was. But yeah, it did have like a little heart to it in the beginning and stuff. A little nice little setup. Yeah. Yeah. As a, as opposed to live free or die hard that just says, <laughs> oh no, we're 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 going. Yeah, uh, it was a little bit. It, I mean, it sounds crazy, but I think it was a little bit more realistic than uh, live free or die hard. Wait, so there's no surfing a jet and 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 taken. <laughs> maybe in the sequel. Uh, you know, you mentioned unrealistic. Uh, I'll be honest, there's only three things that stood out to me as I was watching this. I, I made a note. There's three things that stood out to me as that doesn't seem realistic to me. And as we go through, I'll tell you what they are. But three things jumped out at Jack like Farmer fun. about what was unrealistic about the movie. I think I know what these things are. I'm very curious, but we'll we'll see when they come up. Okay. Because they're so, very different from the unrealistic things from yeah. Live Free or Die Hard. Yeah, they're yeah. like real stuff that can happen, but it's like, oh, I'm not buying that. Yeah. You know? So so yeah. let's, let's, start. let's start. Let's let's go through this movie. Uh, the movie starts with Liam Neeson buying his daughter a karaoke machine for her birthday, which is happening at his ex-wife's house and boy did she uh upgrade liam neeson because that house is nice uh he gets home after the party and his buddies come over for a barbecue and convince him to do a security job protecting a pop singer things don't go well and liam ends up beating the crap out of a dude with a knife and in return for saving her life the singer says she'll help out liam's daughter uh become a singer but also the daughter wants to meet Liam for lunch. So good times there. It turns out the lunch though is just to convince him to agree to let her go to Paris. He begrudgingly agrees, but while dropping them off, finds out that they've been lying about what they're really doing in Europe. Liam lets it go, but he shouldn't have because the girls get kidnapped literally day one. And we get the legendary phone call that ends with, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. And the dude says, <laughs> good luck. Oh. Uh, so um, I guess just to to start off with this whole thing. I, I, I'll, okay, here's the first thing. So it's 2008. <laughs> Let, let's, let's go back. I got I to gotta start. It's 2008. And they say that a 17-year-old girl wants to follow the band U2 around yes. Europe. <laughs> yes. And that's to me, yes. was the first unrealistic thing in I this I so movie. agree. I so <laughs> agree. I had that written down. And and I, U2 is a great band, but every city you're going to follow them? Like, it's going to be the same show. <laughs> what, what was their big album in 2008 that a 17-year-old wanted yeah. to go see? Because I, nothing against... She was an old soul, I guess. She was an old soul. Could, like... Nothing against you too, but they were easily into dad rock by the time 2008. It makes around. more sense for the mom to want to travel yeah. to Europe. Yeah. <laughs> or that Liam. would be more feasible. Or Liam. That Liam was the first well. thing that made me go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not <laughs> buying it. I thought about that too. Is and I could be Liam Neeson's Irish, right? Yeah, yeah, he is Irish too. So that's I think that yeah. was the thing. Like, it was like I, I felt like that sense. was a Liam thing. <laughs> like, <he's> like, <laughs> yes, that's right. Go with you too. Better use and, you too. And whenever I've never heard his Irish accent though. He's always just, playing in him. I feel like I've never heard him speak uh, in his dialect. Before. Every time that's he said his ex wife's name, he's like Lenore. <laughs> yeah, heard Lenore. That? Just, <laughs> you heard it right? <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, "Hello, Lenore." Lenore. <laughs> Lenore. <laughs> uh, the so, best day of me life. <laughs> Before we, so I had to get that out, but let's let's talk about this setup. It was kind of a big chunk of the movie, but I felt like this was the setup, getting to that first good luck or the the, the good luck. James, yeah. I, I always like to start with you here and just tell us about the world we live in and the characters and, and sort of how you see this movie set up for. Well, like I said, the last film we reviewed, Live Free or Die Hard, and you're, you're seeing a, um, I forgot, a pattern here, right? if a dad is like this badass, right? He has kind of this, if it's not a fractured relationship with his daughter, it's not, a, you know, there's reasons why. So Liam Neeson is a dad who worked his butt off as a CIA secret operative guy. We don't know what he did, but he missed a lot of time with his daughter. He's moved cross country and God bless him. I mean, you don't know how bad it is until he goes, brings that karaoke machine to his daughter's birthday, because I don't know if we saw his apartment before then, but you really notice his apartment after he leaves out. So just to paint the picture, the apartment he's staying in is maybe like a one bedroom, I don't know, in Compton or something. <laughs> but 
it's it's very different when you go to visit your wife and her new husband in in Beverly Hills or Brentwood, and this dude is loaded. I don't know what he does for a living. He like owns Delta Airlines yeah. or something. That's why we're not talking there. about COVID. We're talking yeah, about- <laughs> yeah. We ain't talking about COVID. We're talking about old school Delta. Yeah. Okay, the kind that serves you a meal if you pay extra. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He brings a karaoke machine. God bless him. And the mom's just ragging on him. She's giving him a little, it's a little much. It's like, yeah. she's so unlikable at first. She's just giving him a hard time. Yeah. And this dude comes out with like some thoroughbred horse to give her. <laughs> uh, I mean, what, what, what chance do you have here? This poor Liam. You, we're already rooting for him. This poor guy, he's going to go home and eat like ramen noodles for dinner, <laughs> you know. And I don't know. Like I said, his wife has moved on. His daughter, she loves him still. But I mean, she's got a new step daddy. I don't know what his name is. Gary. You know, those guys are always named Gary. <laughs> you know, it, it, this poor guy. It, he yeah. becomes very sympathetic initially, right? It is so sad because they show like the opening is like this home movie. And I think doesn't the, as a little girl, she like opens up a gift and it's like a, a horse or a yes. pony. And then, of course, she get, and you know what? Couldn't this guy have given Liam Neeson like a little heads up? Like, oh, yeah, the karaoke <laughs> machine you're bringing. I'm going to bring a pony. You might want to give that to her a couple of days beforehand or something. But yeah, I think like James said that it is sad seeing Liam go back to his house and he opens up a little birthday book and he's like sliding in like the pictures and he's just going through Aww. looking at all her birthdays. And I'm like, oh, I, I was thinking watching this though. This is actually because when I first saw this movie, I just watched it, you know, oh, action movie. I want to go see this dude beat people up. But watching it this time through, I definitely noticed they did a really good job of presenting who these characters are and really showing us that, mm -hmm. yeah, he cares about his daughter. He That's true. Uh, and he's he's very uh, detail oriented. We figure out he's he's also got that particular set of skills that we find out him chatting with his friends as opposed to a live free or die hard that was just kind of like yeah he has a daughter we are supposed to imply that there's a relationship there where this really explained it and kind of fleshed it out what that situation is and i thought it yeah. was cool too even like um and jack i want to get your take if he who's a better bodyguard for a pop star uh, yes. frank, frank farmer or liam neeson but uh when he's guarding uh, yes. her, name, her name is she-ra the pop star which i thought was a great name but yeah. like even that you're sh you're seeing his heart because he's talking to the singer. I'm not a dad, but uh, one of us is. Maybe he can talk to us about being a dad yeah. in this moment. But <laughs> as a dad. Um, but yeah. I think like if if I did have a daughter, you know, and I get in a position to see one of her idols, I think that's the dad thing to do to be like, hey, uh, my daughter wants to be like you. Mm -hmm. You know, can you give me any? And you just it's really sweet that you see him like try to get that information for his daughter and of course the pop star is like not really having it because mm -hmm. i'm sure she gets that question all the time until later when he protects her ass and yeah. then she gives him some info yeah and that's true the, uh, but yeah jack who's, who's a better bodyguard I, I actually wrote that down as a badass dad with an estranged daughter just like die hard escorting a pop <laughs> queen just like the bodyguard we've yeah. seen this one before it's like yes, we have. come together Next, yep. they're going to try to uh, – he also has to travel the world beating people up like Lionheart. Next, he's going to sneak <laughs> into a mansion and have to steal some money from some crazy gimps. <laughs> yes, and of course, get a needle and stick it – well, you know, <laughs> be on the juice, right? Yes. <laughs> you got to show him like doing like uh, pumping weight, you know, yeah. pumping iron. <laughs> How hard would you laugh if Liam Neeson took his shirt off and he was built like 300? Yeah. I'd be like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For this we don't know if he wasn't <laughs> i know we don't know if he was <laughs> but also and we'll talk about him a little bit as the movie goes on but this movie had a, a lot of just really badass lines throughout and not just like the yippee ki -yay lines which i love those but like that is one of the most that has become an iconic line i will look mm -hmm. for you i will find you and i will kill you Oof. and the guy just going good luck like uh. i don't know how cold do you have to be to ask? Like, if someone said that to me, I don't care where they are. I'd be like, never mind. You got me. You punked me. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. Like, <laughs> I'd let her go. The, <laughs> it's <laughs> the most iconic part of that movie. I mean, that's you, you, it's funny you mentioned it. The whole Yippie Kaye, yeah. that's in like the the lexicon of of like film lines. But 
everyone knows because as she and I know maybe we're skipping some parts, but when she um, when she gets abducted, his voice changes when he speaks into the thing. You remember at one point he's like, uh, you know, this is what's going to happen. They're going to take yeah. you, you know, and I want you to to tell me what the you know, this whole stuff gives you chills. Like, OK, explain yeah. them to me. Like, tell me their, you know, they're not their vitals, but like their uh, tattoo. Or yeah. It's, like yeah. A, like how they look. Just yell them. it out. And I don't remember that. Like, I don't remember mm -hmm. seeing that before. But I mean, when he it gets on the phone with him, his voice changes and it's an iconic stuff. You don't know me, but I have a particular set of skills, you know, and it's like it's like, holy shit, like this dude, you know, like this is like this is what we've come for. This is yeah. what this is what fans. Um, I forgot what you call them. Those, um, those are called set pieces. Right. And when mm -hmm. it comes to film or TV, this is what people this is what's in the trailer. This is why you would come to watch a movie based off of like that scene, you know, because, you know, his, like what you're in for. for his monologue is actually to... better than I remembered. Yeah. It, it's mm -hmm. like like Jack said, like. I, at the end of that, they're probably kidnapping a lot of women, uh, sadly, but none of them are delivering this monologue. I'd be like, hey, guys, you know that blonde we got? Let's just let her go. The rest yeah. are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's maybe we can. Yeah, there's enough other girls coming in from around the world. Yeah, because uh, that guy, he was so calm, cool, and collected as he was saying that. And uh, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but you can almost feel like the heart drop when he's like, go into the bed. Make sure to say whatever you see. And now they're going to take you. I, I like, know. Oh, my God. You can feel her like, wait, what? I thought I was I thought you helped <laughs> me get away. What are you yeah. doing? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that moment where and it's just like in horror movies. It's like she kind of talks a little bit because it looks like they leave the room and it happens. I know it's part of the film, but she kind of makes a noise and it looks like it makes them come back in. But if we can go back further. Yeah. Let's talk about this mom. Again, because this whole thing, when he goes to meet her for lunch, you just see his heart sink because he thinks he's coming to see her and he's really excited. This is a chance to connect with her. But, you know, the fix is in. They it, it's they're basically coming because the mom is there. I'm going to call it an ambush. It's like, hey, we need you to sign this paperwork yeah. because yeah. she's under she's underage and and she needs consent from both of us. And it's almost like I'm so glad Liam, he has such um, we'll talk about it in the second act. But, you know, when she gets abducted, he any other guy could like really rub it in to the mother. Like I told you so. Um, but that's not his whole vibe. He's just a good dad and he wants to please his daughter and he keeps finding out information. Remember at the airport, you know, you told me one thing. Well, here's another. And it's like, you know, it's coming. He, he keeps saying, OK, make sure to call me when you get there. And. You know, as a dad, <laughs> you you get those vibes, but I get it because as you said in the beginning, he's looking at all her baby pictures, but they don't say babies forever. Like I said, they're little and you, this and that, but you know, as they get older, they become more independent. And then dad's not as cool anymore. And uh, dad, I'm gonna go over to Europe and follow you two around, and I don't want you on my back. So. Which, does it turn out that they don't? You two was that was that was not real too, right? Like no, it was a ruse yeah you two yeah. wasn't there then the place they were staying the cousins weren't there either they should have so. you should have known that right away like jack said <laughs> yeah. it's like wait a you sec do. this is 2008 i right. listened yeah. to you two when i was right. your age uh yeah i was gonna say uh, about the ex-wife we I, we don't know why specifically they broke up but she's just a a b word i'm not oh, gonna wow. say it Damn. but she's just mean <laughs> to him Though, bad like, she's a baddie she's, she's a bad like the, every time she, like, she's he shows a bozo up, she shows he shows up to her birthday with a present and she's like Ugh, uh, uh, karaoke machine yeah, oh like, slaps it out of his hand and throws it in the pool what a dad he's like, we already got a pony dad what are you doing i'm here i know <laughs> you didn't bring a pony he's for trying her. yeah and they're like oh hey i'm so excited to see my daughter at lunch she's like just sign the papers jesus it's like what oh, the heck before lady? i forget can we talk about the daughter and the way she like runs and acts? Oh does, my god! Does she not Sorry. remind you of like a twelve year old? The, That's she's what like my running wife, all like crazy. Did I'm your like, did your ladies turn to you? I mean, when Lenny turned, she's like, I was seventeen year olds don't act like that. That looks yeah. like an eleven, twelve year old. Yeah, yeah. Like she's overdoing it. She's ODM yeah. trying to act yeah. young. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's like flailing I, her arms and running with her head forward, and I was like, come on, she's seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Like, even, even kind of like wanting a pony, I think is still kind of yeah younger. That's true. Than that, that's kind of younger. Yeah, you want a new car, don't you? 
Yeah, yeah. you'd want a car. At that that point. would be ideal. Yeah, like he comes with like <laughs> a Ferrari for her. See, that yeah, would be yeah. good. The the yeah, that does seem young, like, like seventy years old, and like, isn't that what people under thirty like? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, she was probably older than 17 and trying to play 17 young. and overdoing it. Yeah. And they didn't, um, yeah. they didn't reel correct her. Yeah, yeah. They had to reel it in. They didn't do it. But, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, but James, mm. you hit on something as we get to the next scene. Uh, yeah, he, uh, Liam goes to his ex wife's house <laughs> and, uh, he doesn't say I told you so, which is the second <laughs> unrealistic thing in the movie to me. That he didn't lead with I told you so. That would be the first thing I'd, I'd be like, I'd just open the door. I'd kick open the door back. I told you so. You right. Every one of you. Right. I was right. But anyway, he should have cleared the table. Like, I, I wish. I'm hoping he's clear. I, there's always I want someone to clear a table. You know what yeah. I'm talking about, yeah, unnecessarily. Yeah. You know, just... <laughs> how he didn't come in there just at the top of his lungs. I was right. I want you to admit it. To yep. come in. Uh, he was being nice because he needed that private jet. That's yeah. What he's like. Uh, so yeah, he, so he goes to the ex-wife's house. He starts digging through her stuff for clues uh, when his friend Sam is able to use the phone call recording to figure out everything about the guy who took his daughter and says he only has 96 <laughs> hours to oh find God. her. Hmm. So Liam hops on a plane and sleuths around the apartment, trying to piece together things in his head before finding a cell phone SIM card and taking it to a kiosk to look through the photos and zoom in on the reflection to find a picture of the guy who met the girls at the airport. Liam finds this dude at the airport and beats him up before he gets hit by a truck like his name is Regina George. Dang. Uh, Dang. I was watching this and going back to when Liam gets to the house. Andy, I want, I want your take on this. He's, he's just digging through things, rifling through things. Yeah. Did he miss an opportunity to just like break a TV and be like, I'm doing research. I need to do this. And just like, I feel like I would use that as cover to be like, I'm looking for clues. Smash. Break this dude's TV. <laughs> like breaking shit. Yeah. He's like he... Messing stuff up. Like, look, it's if do you want me to find her or not? Smash. <laughs> if that was Why John McClane, he would the be. Window? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Liam's just too classy. Um, he but is. I was even wondering that. Like, why is he even in the daughter's room looking through? What is he gonna find? <laughs> right. I was, I was kind of confused at that. And <laughs> and when uh, they the two girls meet the charming guy, um, <laughs> the friend, like I'm just like that's that's traveling to another country 101. You don't go, <laughs> yeah, we're here all by ourselves. We got no one else here. This is right. you're really hot. Come on by later. Like it's just like you're just. It's and they time. give him the apartment number. That's the thing. And I'm like, you don't do that. You meet him out front, right? I don't right. know if you guys caught that. Like, oh yeah, we're in the whole fifth floor. That's us. Yeah. You know. And, and how did uh, she have a playlist ready to go so fast? They're in their yeah. house. She hits a button and it's like music's playing already. Yeah. Like, wow. It's for the movie. You know <laughs> why, right? So you can't hear when the people break in. Mm -hmm. Like, I was wondering, like, why would you just start? I mean, she hasn't even put her bags down barely. And she's playing music and jumping around like a 17-year-old would. You know, yeah. she's like jumping, dancing. <laughs> and the daughter never called Liam right when she landed like she was supposed to. That was, I mean, so I was already rooting against her right away. Oh, yeah. I'm like, it, never she had it Liam. coming. She had it coming. I, I was thinking when she met that guy at the airport and did all these things that we just talked about, Liam wasn't actually that good at prepping her for this. Because he's like, just call me and let me know where you're at. He should have been like, yeah, don't talk to strangers. Mm. Don't get in cars <laughs> with strangers. Don't tell people the password to the front door of your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, she did every single thing wrong. For someone who grew up with a dad who is overprotective, she clearly had no wherewithal in this situation yeah. well in her defense her friend was doing all the stuff wrong yeah. you saw you saw she was feeling guilty and badly you remember when she when she's like hi dad and she went to talk to him in the bathroom you know mm -hmm. like almost like your man is calling you and you're yeah. sort of, you know what I'm saying like she's like well let me explain what had happened was you know yeah this charming guy he's like, I, I didn't do anything gonna, with him i didn't i didn't have sex with him <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you know when liam finally does catch up to that the charming guy uh do you notice there's like that other guy that's with him that i think he pulls liam out of the car and they start yeah, yeah it's like a taxi guy yeah yeah, yeah i Why guess he, once that charming guy got hit by the truck 
shouldn't Liam have gone to that guy and tried to get some answers? That dude was long gone. Oh, that dude went and got the, I think the cops that came at that point. So he yeah. couldn't go back to the airport, mm. right? I think that's why. Because the taxi had like went and got the policia, you know. Yeah. Well, okay. That's Spanish. Okay. Uh, the police <laughs> or whatever you call it. <laughs> uh, but James, I'm guessing one of the things you didn't like here was how he, first off, the, he gets the SIM card and clever of him to look through the photos, but I've never in my life seen a kiosk that you plug a SIM card into <laughs> to look through photos. And the fact that he zoomed in and saw the reflection of this dude. I know. <laughs> and was able to pick him out yeah. with this phone from 2008, by the way. Not exactly high quality photos back in those days. Of course. And it's not like an iPhone. In, it's not an iPhone. You zoom 10. in and it's like blurry. He zoomed yeah. in and it got clear. It actually got clearer. It, like yeah. the background is clearer than the foreground <laughs> right. in this movie. I mean, yeah, like I say, you have to suspend disbelief, but yes, yeah, stuff like that. I mean, after the U2 thing, I mean, then you have to know, <laughs> yeah. okay, I'm suspending disbelief for the rest <laughs> of the film. That's where all, right? all logic is. Exactly. You, you know, it's, you know, you've got surfing a jet and you've got U2, like, a, you know, <laughs> a 17 year old being a groupie for U2. It's like I, right here. Yeah, I believe the jet over U2 any day of the movie. <laughs> Because this was after they put their album on an iPhone, or was it before they did that? I don't remember. Before. I don't know. I know, exactly. It wasn't Spotify back then. Yeah. Um, look, this is that moment where he's trying to figure it out, and I, I think that's the fun part of the film. He's going basically off a recording and what his uh, CIA friend has told him, and he's just kind of you know doing background work. And I think uh, the, the, the pretty boy... Talk about a grisly ending because it's so disturbing when he gets hit by that truck. Even Liam's character has to turn away and he can't watch. And he's like, damn, but he's lost this one guy that can give him the information. Yeah, that, like I said, very similar to End of Mean Girls when the girl gets hit by the bus. But, uh, oh, the, yeah. Uh, some, this is just a nitpick, but I don't know how it is in France, but if, if <laughs> some guy ran up a or drove the wrong way on an on ramp and backed up traffic and is running around, people would probably get out of their cars and have a few words to say to him. But it felt like everyone, even though there's a giant mess on the freeway and all the cars were zigzag at this point, he's just like huh. walking back after the guy gets hit by the car. And everyone's <laughs> in their car. It's quiet. It's uh, everyone's no taking one's taking their time. Everyone's like, OK, let's just. Let's take this reasonably. Let's get this fixed out. <laughs> I feel like if it happened here, you'd have some people who have a few words to say to you. People would be getting mm -hmm. out of their cars. You would hear some honking. Hear <laughs> well, some especially noise. New York, right? First yeah. of all, they'd be honking their horn, and someone would get out of his car like, what are you doing, meathead? This is New York. <laughs> yeah. Like, someone's going to tell you. Like, right. only in New York do they say, this is New York. You know. right. yeah. <laughs> Is that the what same they, guy that talked about Spider-Man? Yeah, yeah the same Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. What if they did that in Paris, too? They're like, hey, this is Paris. What? Yeah, this I is Paris. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, we love Liam. I think after that, too, and, and I guess you'll lead into it, he goes to, this is when he goes to, I guess, Francis' version of, uh, let's say Skid, not Skid Row. What, what do you? What is it in Amsterdam? Andy would know this place. He's probably uh, been recently. Uh, red Light District? Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, the, like yeah. the Red Light District. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he. Uh, so that's when Liam, he meets up with his old intelligence chum, and the chum says he's going to help him out, but he needs to quit killing people. Mm -hmm. uh, but he does tell Liam kind of the next place to go as he's continuing on his journey. Uh, Liam hires a translator and puts a bug on a pimp before following him <laughs> to a construction site where they have a bunch of kidnapped girls. And after seeing his daughter's jacket with one of the girls, he flies into a rage and just kills everybody before getting into a twisted metal style demolition derby fight, blowing up everyone and getting away. Uh, and Andy, I'll, I'll kick it to you, but as, as James alluded to, this is kind of how he's climbing up the rungs of the organization. We see him start with just, the guy at the airport, now he's getting to the pimps, now he's getting to the guy who runs the, I guess, the construction brothel. I don't know what you call that place. I can't get over you just saying bug on a pimp. I don't know. It just sounds funny hearing you say the word pimp. I'm sorry. I just had to say that before I forget. You know? I, I, I grew up in Parkland, baby. We had <laughs> Lots of bugs on pimps out there. Oh, that, uh, that whole part, though, is so clever, though, because I, I don't remember that scene, and I was wondering what he was either. doing with that girl, and then, like, the fact that he was just trying to listen to conversation that was going on during his his bugging of said pimp. 
Yeah. Uh, so I thought that was really great to see that because, uh, you know, like the movie we saw last time with John McClane, he, he wouldn't have done any of that. <laughs> he would have just go <laughs> smash, smash and Gronk style into uh, yeah, yeah. everything around that area. So the fact that he had like, you know, some clever intel beforehand before he went beating people's ass. But um, as we're talking here, is this the part where he gets to the room where he's drinking the coffee and talking to the guys at the no, table? That's next, next no. Week. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, Take this it easy. He's in, like, okay. It's yeah, like, uh, it's like a, a container <laughs> unit, and there's like the the curtains, and then the girls are all in their own little oh yes places. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, by yeah, the way, guys, we can guys make fun of these. Them. We can we can talk about how bad these guys were, but they were very respectful and quiet. So, like, if you were in one of those places, because I'm sure you'd hear everything. But if you're in one of those curtained rooms, uh, those guys were like, listen. Everyone else is trying to do their thing. Let's keep it quiet because it yeah. wasn't very loud in there either. <laughs> They're trying to make love to the drugged women. How how say. gentlemanly of them, <laughs> you know. But yeah, you didn't hear like any yelling or yeah. any groaning or something like this. Yeah. But how disturbing, how skeevy, you know. And, and like I said, for these men to like go and I don't know. I mean, I guess this stuff is real. I mean, this isn't completely yeah. fake, but how skeevy to mm-hmm. like, you know, get women like this that are drugged up and not even present. You know, it's weird, but like I said, this is a good premise to set us up for like, yo, this guy. It, the great thing about that is the fear that th- his daughter could have been in one of those rooms yeah. or she's she's being, you know, debased uh, somewhere else. You know, that's a man's worst fear, I would assume, or one of mm-hmm. them, that his daughter is going to be put up for like prostitution. Um um, and like illegal prostitution against her will in a foreign country. I mean, you talk about like, you know, like up against it. And you remember even his friends saying you got like 96 hours. And at this point, he's got a, less than that. Right. You know, yeah. he's flew across country. So it, 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 it gives us even as the audience adrenaline for him. We're right there with him. Like he's got to save her. Especially you know? when you yeah. find the uh, daughter's friend. Uh, well, yes, that, so with, in the uh, in the unit, it wasn't the friend; it was just the jacket. The but it's a jacket, right. though, but right? Still, it's always yeah, something, which yeah, is scary enough. Right? It's, yeah, it's a popular, or it's not a popular jacket enough to know, like, oh, that's her jacket. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah, like it's very obvious, like, oh, that's my daughter's jacket. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I think was this the girl that kind of looked like his daughter from the side or from the back, or he thought yeah. from someone else? You remember, he yeah. sees like a brunette in, yeah. in the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he uh, he tries to talk to her, and that's when things go haywire. But this was kind of one of our first, like yeah. another one of our first big action. This is a big budget action scene where they're driving all over this construction site. Mm-hmm. Cars are blowing up. Things are getting destroyed everywhere. Uh, just uh, I like to throw it out there because it is another big action scene in this movie that was it cool because it was different. It wasn't a lot of times action movies are kind of like you get a certain type of action. And it's kind of repeated over and over again where this yeah. was definitely it was a different type of action scene. And we see that he can also that guy can drive too. he's a good mm-hmm. driver. Oh, big time. Because as you say, Jack, I and, and I just want to piggyback on what you said. This movie's different than what I remember. I, I felt like I thought it was going to be hand to hand combat like the whole movie, but that's not the case. It's, you know, it's only yeah. a handful of times he does it, but it's so memorable. Yeah. Um, but you're right. There are different types of action. So it's not a repeaty movie. It's not like, OK, I see this coming. You know, it, it's it, it has good pacing to it after yeah. that first act. So we do appreciate that. It's structured. Yeah, it's structured. Yeah, it's structured very well. Very well. So let, continuing on to, to kind of get to what Andy was talking about, uh, the old cop friend is now saying that he's going to kick Liam out of the country, but Liam is able to dodge their attacks, get back to his hotel, and the trafficked woman he saved with the jacket is now awake and tells him about a house where the bad guys are. So he goes there and he pretends to be that cop, but it's really just a bluff to hear him all talk so we can figure out which one of them said good luck. And boy, does he find out and it's t- it's on like Donkey Kong as he starts icing dudes left and right. <laughs> During the fight, he finds his daughter's friend and is dead. So when he gets Mr. Good Luck alone, he electrocutes him to death. And now he's taking the fight to the cop's house, shooting his wife in the arm and getting the last piece of info he needs to go save his daughter. This was such a cool scene watching this, uh, especially when he hands the guy the note and he says, can you read this? And he's like, Mm -hmm. it says good luck. And you're like, Oh, (laughs) he said it. Uh, um, A a few things. Uh, Andy, we're just going to start with you because you had kind of alluded to this a second ago. 
this was just this felt I, he hasn't got his daughter yet but already you're kind of getting that taste of like yes you're getting revenge against these dudes and you're doing yeah. exactly what you said you were going to do yeah i mean like like we said this the pacing of this movie goes really well and i think it's because you don't get to this until later on in the movie because you're you know he's going through all these steps and then but yeah now he's finally in the thick of it and yeah that scene is crazy because i i don't remember that scene so i was wondering like what what's with all the small talk like what's he talking about he's holding this coffee cup i kept waiting for him to throw coffee on somebody or something uh yeah. but yeah the fact that he's so smart he <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to use john mcclain again but john mcclain would go in there and just start fucking people up and then yeah. ask questions <laughs> later where liam's like he's got a strategy to it but yeah once you hear the good luck it's just like for me, like the music that starts playing is like that Blade song or something. You're about to see, like, <laughs> the start DJ with the flashlights <laughs> yeah, on his head. It's just like, uh oh, <laughs> here comes Blade. <laughs> That's good. Uh, uh, there, there was a part though when he's he's uh he's electrocuting that dude, and um, he says <laughs> that uh, sounds God. funny. I'm sorry. There's a part when he's electrocuting the guy. <laughs> <laughs> that dude uh, dude uh mr good luck he says uh he's like where's my daughter he said uh we sell the virgins the virgins and uh i i, I can't i have to imagine that somewhere in the back of liam's mind he was like at a girl yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there had to be a little bit of like Whoo. <laughs> but how do they know they that's saw the her, thing they saw her run head. they saw her <laughs> oh yeah that's a virgin <laughs> They're like, no one runs like that. <laughs> no seasoned woman runs like that. <laughs> seasoned. Um, I, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm wondering is like, how do they know? And she's like, no, I'm a virgin. So, oh, okay. Well, she said so. Yeah. I right. mean, it's, it's yeah. like the blonde should have said that too, but they know straight up that she would be lying. They're like, yeah. nah, you ain't no virgin. No, no, no. no. All right. Uh, but <laughs> the, spe speaking of the, the, the blonde though, and James, I'll kind of kick this to you. This, to me, seeing her really added weight suddenly mm -hmm. like oh wow not everyone's getting out of this mm -hmm. and to to andy's point and, and to your point earlier it was like i need to act now like this she's already been drugged up presumably taken advantage of and is dead so what does that mean for my daughter where's she at she could exactly. be in the same thing yeah and, oh yeah go ahead were you gonna no, say i was gonna say yeah. like yeah. how did you like that moment to me how did, did, did you have any takeaways from that yeah, well, I'm just imagining for his character, like I said, once again, a father's worst nightmare. And I, I don't know how it is if she, let's say she's in her mid 20s or whatever. I, I think if you have kids, no matter what age they are, you know, you always still see that kid, you know, the, the little mm -hmm. child as we, I mean, actually didn't make it clear in the beginning of the movie, he's looking at her bait, her kid pictures, right? Yeah. So it's just still his little girl, no matter what, even though she's 17 now. But it's just that all those fears, like that's the worst thing that could happen to her. You, you, you know, like I said, for her to be kidnapped by like these gangsters who are here, like, like I said, selling these women. And when he finds the friend like that, yeah, as you said, clock's ticking. And he still doesn't completely know, but he's just going off of faith. But for all he knows, maybe one of those three things have already happened to her. You have no mm -hmm. idea what, what kind of shape she's in. But, you know, he's got a job. And and to go back to what you say, I, the, the, the reason why it's so great with Liam Neeson, he shows so much nuance when he's dealing with all these bad guys each time because he did work in intelligence. So you got to use your mind. It's not all just brawn and like I'm just a kick ass Like he can do that. But he's got to use his mind to like find out stuff. Because like I said, he's coming to a foreign country. You know, yeah. to find like to find his daughter. I mean, it's a big country. I mean, they're in Paris, right? I think they're in Paris. So yeah. it's a big city. You know, it's like if you're going to New York or Los Angeles and you don't know exactly where to look. I mean, you got millions of people there um, and he's got to find out this underbelly. But yeah, it was very disturbing. And, you know, this this trips me out in these movies. Dude is tied up and, you know, all, you know, you know, those scene when it's coming. It's like, OK, tell me where this is. And then the person always no. spits in their face. Yeah. You know, they always spit in your face and it's very disgusting. And I think after the second time he spit in Liam's face, he didn't even bother removing it. <laughs> you know, yeah. and they always say no. Then you torture them and then they finally share. And then you torch. They say no again. You have to keep torturing and no, no, no. No, yes. What, what is this, Andy? I don't get it. 
Like maybe these are real tough guys, and that's why. But you know, you you put a little bit of electricity on me. I'm 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 telling you <laughs> yeah. all the codes, okay, all the passwords, all the bank accounts, what you yeah. need. Yeah, I'm telling <laughs> Let's keep you this moving. I'm telling you after his monologue. Yeah, like <laughs> when he says I have I have uh, like skills, I'd say I'm so sorry. Is, I'm so sorry. This is I'm so sorry. Wrong house. Uh, <laughs> let me go get your daughter so you can speak back to her. Here, I'll, fly, I'll fly her back with with with, with airline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I don't speak English. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know it's great though. After the uh, scene with the good luck guy and the torture, and I I do remember his his friend's name that's out there because. For me, as a, a stupid American, his name is Jean Claude. Which Jean Claude, yes, uh, yes. So All these said, callbacks to our movies, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so he, and I I really liked the character of Jean Claude. By the way, he was such like a prick. Like he was just yeah. like he was helping that he wasn't. That he's kind of a scumbag. Um, his poor wife. But I love when <laughs> Liam Neeson gets in there because I think of the moment before of when <laughs> Jean Claude arrives to his home and Liam Neeson's in there and he's like he's. He's a little nervous about Liam Neeson in his house. But I wonder the moment before what happened there. Liam just comes to the door. It's the wife. He's like, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Let me help you with dinner. It's like a very nice moment. And then and she seems great. She's like, oh, look, he's here. Oh, exciting. And then the next thing, you it's know. It's a great scene. Cute, sir. And I thought, I just thought that was great. because It's just a flesh wound. She'll be fine. <laughs> I know. That's exactly what he says. <laughs> I just, just think it's not, so good. It's just like you finally got this guy, this dad, to the point of like he's not messing around anymore. No. Like, like this is what this is what's happening. I popped like when he shot the wife in the arm. Yeah. I, like I, literally, I, I've seen this movie before. I forgot about that though, and I literally was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <geez." laughs> like, oh, like, like he did it. He Whoa. Shot her, wow, he shot his wife right in front of him. <laughs> Jeez, like that that of all the things that got me. Uh yeah. speaking of the torture though, seriously, man, like if you are in a spot where you're tired, like this guy just wrecked your entire crew single-handedly, and he stabs these metal things into your legs and he <laughs> clips up the electricity. Why oh. are you making this hard on yourself? Like you're gonna talk. Just yeah. <laughs> like, like like how tough? Like this guy clearly. It's not like you don't know. This guy found you across the the world, like he said he would in two days or something. How do you not just go look, man? You're gonna figure out. I might as well That's save right. myself. But uh, this is another really cold line that I really loved. Is uh, when he tells him, he's like, "That's everything I know," and he says, "I believe you, but it's not gonna save you." And then he leaves the power on oh dude mm. i like there's this like slow like going off the edge with uh liam neeson this movie where it starts off he's, he's obviously tense all time but it's very like okay i've got to have a plan i gotta have a plan but then as time keeps going he becomes more and more like look i'm gonna shoot this lady in the arm i'm gonna let you just cute this guy to death i gotta start making things happen no yeah. matter what and it mm -hmm. he starts to drift into john mcclain mode a little mm -hmm. bit as this mm -hmm. goes or he's yeah. like i, I just gotta kill people picking. But that gets us to the end of the movie uh, where uh, Liam gets to where his daughter is being sold and he fights his way into a bidding area, which looks wildly elaborate for what they're doing. Uh, and his daughter comes out and is earning a pretty high price, which I think, again, somewhere in the back of Liam Neeson's head, he's got to be pretty <laughs> proud of how a girl. a girl. For. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the bad guys tie him up, uh, but that just makes the killing slower. So he uh, he finally gets to a boat where there's the final showdown, and it felt like the last level of a video game where he kills everyone before even taking the shot at what the guy I call Tugboat Tubby and saves his daughter. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the movie ends with Liam taking his daughter to the pop star's house for singing lessons. Now, I don't get these bad Like At the end of the day, these bad guys, it's just a job for them. And the third thing I don't find believable is that you'd see this guy single-handedly kill everyone on this boat, and you wouldn't just say, I quit. <laughs> I quit. I'm just going to get a different job. This is a job. I'm moving on. I don't. That's the third thing I don't believe, is that you would see this guy has climbed the ranks of your entire uh organization mm -hmm. in two days yeah. killed everybody and you're not just gonna go i quit let's jump into the it. water like, like you're, you're really gonna go after him with a knife after he's like wrecked everybody like maybe <laughs> i'm the guy that can do it no you quit I, I i don't believe that that's that's where i that's where i i they lost me yeah not enough people quit <laughs> and <laughs> i speaking of those guys though those henchmen 
are they're the worst henchmen ever like none of them are very like intimidating liam takes them all out the only guy that gives them problems is that guy with that sick knife what is that it's like attached to his <laughs> wrist or something and he's got great eyeliner that guy too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like a really good look like you don't think he can fight because he's the dude from the bidding room yeah yeah so but he's actually kind of a badass himself which i mean you wouldn't expect that but you have to have that because you know in any of these fighting movies you have to have at least someone that can give the lead you know some of a fight because yeah. other than that, they have no obstacle. They can just beat the crap out of everyone. <laughs> and so that was a surprise. And, you know, I, I kept turning to my wife like, oh, he's got the car. Okay, he sees a boat. And But this is more John McClane. If he was John McClane, I was thinking he was going to drive the car onto the <laughs> boat. <laughs> That's, what I thought, too. That's what I was thinking. But I was like, okay, that might be a little too John McClane-ish. Yeah. You know, he like I said, he's still stealthy. He's going to actually jump on the boat. But that also kind of helps with giving him because he kind of gets a little injury remember i think he kind of hurts his knee or his ankle yeah. uh by jumping obviously from like the bridge to the boat so you know he had to give him a little something because by the time he finally saves his daughter he's beaten up <laughs> yeah uh, as, as jack yeah. mentioned though like he gets all the way to this boat he's come all the way from this other you know across the world and that guy that he talks to who his name's like patrice patrice saint Clair, and he goes that's my daughter and he's like well <laughs> that's business and i'm like really this guy you're going to say it's just business too and i'm like no oh, you're dead that guy's dead yeah. very soon i like, love that patrice guy though like he had he did seem like such a cold businessman like totally did of like, course until yeah. he was cornered and until he was cornered in that you know he was singing like uh jerry lewis yeah. uh, <laughs> uh when he was cornered in the uh in the elevator right yeah. you remember yeah. and i think liam does what we like i said we're like you know he's giving us our red meat he like fucking blows the dude away Oh yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> He'd have to do like begging and like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. After you know, tough, yeah. it's business. But you know, he he did henchman one on one. He failed the test. He didn't sit there and watch Liam get killed. Right? Mm -hmm. They tell you their whole plot and all their business, and then they walk away because yeah. right. they don't want to see it. You know, they're cold yeah. enough to do the business, but not cold enough to watch the killing. You know, I don't I don't want to watch it. You know, right? I'm not an animal. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an animal. You know, we've got these girls we're prostituting over here against their will, but I'm, you know, I'm not some animal. I'm not a bad guy. Yeah. You know? that, that actually got me too was when the, uh, the, the dead body goes up the elevator and then the woman sees him and is like <laughs> screaming. I'm like, Oh, the the dead body's too much, but the women being sold. Yeah. <laughs> like, can I come to a nice selling people as merchandise party and not see a dead body? For yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. What does the world come to? <laughs> and I'm like, sure there usually is. Uh, one one more guy we got to talk about is that Jack, Jack just mentioned Tugboat Tommy or whatever. What did Tug, you call him? Tugboat Tubby. Tommy. <laughs> Tugboat he's just, Tubby. He's just laying on the bed, just waiting. And I was just thinking about that uh, guy's day. Like, what's did he tell the eyeliner guy? Like, find me something. I'm just gonna be laying in my bed here. Uh, and he's just like striking a pose. And you're just you kind of uh, see that guy. You're like, okay, this guy's gonna get murdered these, pretty soon. I don't condone what he did, but well, who he was and the character he's playing was a horrible person. Person, but in a vacuum was he kind of not living the dream i mean just like on a boat eating wasn't whatever he in he like was, a robe wasn't he in a robe <laughs> like in a robe. he was wearing a crown too yeah. but and he's like he go get me some beautiful young woman uh like i'll be here yeah. in the boat <laughs> he's indulged like he's someone obviously so rich that he's overindulged in life everything he's overindulged in booze food Don't illegal you prostitutes don't you think uh, if they panned out the camera a little bit? There's like a whole feast of like those big chicken legs you'd eat at medieval <laughs> times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, yeah. and like wine that he drinks out of a big ass chalice, right? Yeah, it's yeah. got to be that. But like yeah. I say, he's they gave him the Harvey Weinstein treatment. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? He's like totally nasty old look, mother. You know, yeah, the nasty old looking dudes. And yes, obviously they have to go through all that trouble to get a woman. You know, yeah. not not you know a bit against their will, unfortunately. And it was you know, so good unquote. the way. He, so you're saying he, he lived in. that life it, just for love. He just came <laughs> that person because he wanted to find love. That's yeah, he's always looking for love. Now that's a different movie, that's, right? <laughs> that's became, pretty women, pretty woman, right? He, you he know, became the head of a criminal organization to find love. love.
to find love, right? Is, he falls in love with a prostitute. When Liam Neeson does catch him, finally catches up to him, the guy's about to spout off, like we talk about with the bad guys, they always have their like one liner, and like Liam doesn't even give him the chance. It's just like blip, boom, gunshot in the head. I thought that was I like how Liam Neeson was just like there was never like a hesitation ever. He's just like kick the kneecaps, shoot him in the face, throw this guy, stab this guy. It's just had to, man. This is one of the rare movies for me that I think has gotten better since I first saw it. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I thought uh, as an action movie, it checks all the boxes. There is, I, I made some jokes about things that weren't believable, but there were a few stretches, like timing of things. Like, oh, you just happen to walk in here right as your daughter is being put up for sale it's all stuff that i go that's fine i mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let it ride uh but you do they do a good job of getting you to kind of care about these characters and who they are and and what's next for them and uh they even tie everything up with the the pop star at the end which i'm sure she, i'm sure she i'm sure she has a big career ahead of her but uh i like i really like this movie do you guys have any kind of final thoughts on it or any uh closing statements on untaken on, on I thought it was great. Um, the ending is kind of funny. I don't know why it made me laugh. They go to the door of this mansion at the end and the daughter looks at Liam Neeson and says, so where are we? And I'm like, why did she just ask now? Like literally <laughs> at the door. <laughs> and then there's the pop star. But yeah, I-, I Mo Movie I, magic. I don't think I've you know. seen uh, the sequel. So I'm, <laughs> if she becomes a pop star in the next one, that'd be that'd be excellent. No, um, that would be. But yeah. Um, it was super fun. Like I, I really enjoyed it. Like very action packed, but also had some good like plot in there. So you kind of identified with him as a dad trying to save his daughter, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. And the director is the same director as we talked about. District B thirteen is super action packed, like fun movie. So yeah, I think all around, I thought it was, I thought it was great. Oh, but now that you mention it, I'm realizing uh, both based in France, District mm. B thirteen and this mm. probably um, intentional. Oh. He must be French. Uh, James, any uh, any closing thoughts? Yeah, as you guys say, I I I think I was pleasantly surprised um, uh, seeing the film this time. First of all, it's not long. I, I want to say it's about an hour and a half. I, for mm -hmm. some reason, I thought this was you know when you think of movies like this, you would think a two hour film, mm -hmm. but it's an hour and a half, and with a first act that shows us the character. It's not action packed for like the first 20, 25 minutes. So I I, I just I thought with Liam Neeson, uh, he gave a great grounded performance. And, you know, the whole thing with his daughter, the relationship they showed his daughter, I thought was really strong. So it makes us root even more um, when he's trying to rescue her. Uh, it wasn't a mindless action movie. And normally you would think that, especially one that short, you know, just go straight to the action, get to the point. But it, it's got everything in it. And, you know, what, what a great performance, you know, and Liam Neeson, he's like, you know, it's like everyone looks and is like, man, you know, that's like the coolest dad ever, right? Yeah. Like a dad that's like that dedicated to his, his, um, his family, um, but also like a, you know, a badass, man. It's really cool. You know, it's a lot of wish fulfillment. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. I just remember this. At the end, when they do go to the airport, I just thought it was funny how, like, the daughter still rides with the other two families and he has to oh, take yeah. a cab home. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, that was kind of messed up. They're like, anyways, thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks for everything. See you, you know. next year for the birthday. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you know what's funny about that too? The whole thing with the pop star, and it was great because at a certain point I was like, was that like a wasted moment? I mean, they it, the callback was so far. Like you're talking about the very beginning and end. I was wondering where they're gonna pay that off again. And I was so glad they did, and it was perfect how they did it. Um, but yeah, this is a great film. I mean, what, taken. I mean, it's an iconic movie for him. Yeah, and, and yeah. What, what was great. What I like about this movie, and you mentioned the time, I personally, I love a good hour and a half movie. I, I mm -hmm. like it when they 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 take the time they have and they use it well. And this movie, to your point, did it pretty well. It, was, it wasn't it was long, but everything they had in there mattered. Uh, they, even the little thing about buying a karaoke machine, which at first sounds like, okay, this dad is just out of touch, is really like it pays off. But then the pop singer and then getting her thing, it, it all plays together. And Andy, as you mentioned, her playing with the horse in the video and then her getting the horse later. And the guys coming over for the barbecue is to set up certain things that happen later. And so mm -hmm. it all, it, it, the stuff that happens all matters too. It's not just a uh, random action scene 
to random action scenes. It's actually a really well done movie. So speaking of well done, you know, I like my bacon well done, especially <laughs> my Kevin Bacon. Uh, Andy, do you have a, a six degrees of Kevin Bacon for us? Yeah, this is a fun one. So uh, they remade the television show A Team into a movie, and Liam Neeson played Hannibal, uh, mm -hmm. but the character that played Face was Bradley Cooper. Yeah, mm, Bradley Cooper. Bradley <laughs> Cooper was in Silver Lining Playbook. That was my favorite movie with him. And his mm -hmm. dad in that movie was Robert De Niro. Oh, Robert De Niro was in a movie <laughs> called Sleepers with Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm so glad nice. you were able to work that. I, it's funny because I, I was that was a fun one because I couldn't remember who was in Silver Linings Playbook. So me neither. I did, I couldn't remember De Niro was in that. Yeah, he's yeah. like the the dad addicted to the Eagles. Um, oh now i remember oh yeah that was a great role well that was a good this was a good one i enjoyed uh this movie next week though uh <laughs> we go to 2009 james tell us what we're watching <laughs> we are watching the glorious nick cage in bad lieutenant portacall new orleans period <laughs> I am so eager to watch this. I, have I feel no like we've been idea. talking about this for like months. Like yeah, me too. To this, but... Me too. I hope I haven't uh, overhyped it. Just, I just enjoy the ride for I'm whatever excited. it may be. I kind of want to watch it together. I haven't watched <laughs> the trailer. I haven't. Well, I haven't looked up anything about it. Thank you. And uh, I am very excited to watch that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after that, the next show after that in two weeks will be. 2010's Scott Pilgrim versus the world. I think that'll be a fun one, uh, right. especially as we start getting more and more into the world of uh, comic book movies and things. This one is based off of a, uh, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's a comic book though. I think it's like a, like a graphic novel. I could mm. be wrong. I'm sure all the fans of that movie are like, Whoa, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. big fan base. What do you do? What? It's a yes. manga <laughs> or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, that'll be fun to see. I'm excited for that. Then we go to 2011. Andy, you're back on the clock. What do we uh, what do we got for 2011? I really originally was going to go with the movie The Raid or I was going to go with Warrior. And I'm like, no, those are two on the nose of what we've been doing lately. So I'm going Bridesmaids. Oh, Bridesmaids. OK, <laughs> I, was, I like that. That'll be fun. Uh, I, I see a pattern here. <laughs> I see a pattern. He's got Mean Girls, Bridesmaids. These are like classic comedies. Mean Girls was Jack. That was oh, my was you. Okay. Well, <laughs> I wish she's all, I wish she's all that. Right. Yeah, James, when right. are you going to pick the girly movie? I know. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, I think maybe Port of Call. Because wasn't that that was like Melissa McCarthy's first kind of like big, you know, and that's when oh, she's she like a like household stole name that now. movie. I mean, yeah. everyone was great in that movie, but she's like, she killed it. Yeah, that was her yeah. big breakout. You're actually yeah. making me feel super old knowing now realizing that was 10 years ago. Yeah, right. That's crazy. I remember going to the movies to see that. Yeah. Like, I remember it was like a big deal. It was a huge hit. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> Time <laughs> flies, man. Yeah, I was only 20. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in the age of 21. In, in in yeah, movie. you know, running was, with your head forward, your arms <laughs> flapping. You don't know what you're doing with those legs. You guys noticed that too, because that run was ridiculous. Yeah, it was a little. But that does it for us. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, Andy, where can the world find John Line? Uh, you can find me at just Andy Rossi. And James Shippy. And you can find me at J Shippy number two on Twitter and at J E Shippy number two on Instagram. And I'm Jack Farmer. You can find me at Real Jack Farmer across all social media. That does it for us. Make sure to watch Bad Lieutenant and then join us next week as we talk all about it. And leave a comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Let us know what you thought about this movie. And also hit us up and let us know what you thought about Bad Lieutenant. And we may even read your comments uh, on the air. Until then, we'll see you guys next week.